Hello, this is Blue Joe Saunders, WBO middleweight champion of the world. Subscribe to Sport and Icons to stay in touch with all the top news. God bless you all. So this is the second video for this story so far. And this entire series or this playlist is for fighters who are currently still active. So this is their story so far. The first one I've done was Anthony Joshua. So you can check out that, that playlist on the story so far and go watch the Anthony Joshua one. And I did a poll asking who you guys wanted next. And I gave you five names and Billy Joe Saunders finished at 50% where he beat the likes of Keith Thurman, Terence Crawford and Amir Khan and James DeGale. So 50% of you wanted a Billy Joe Saunders one. And I'm glad that you said that because that's the one that I actually wanted to do. So I'll do my best for you to give the story so far for Billy Joe Saunders. Now, Billy Joe, he is currently 28 years old. In fact, he'll be 29 in one week's time. So depending on when you watch this video. And he was born on the 30th of August, 1989 in Welwyn Garden City in Hertfordshire in England. He's a Southpaw and he's 5 feet 11. And as I said, the WBO World Middleweight champion and he has a reach of 71 inches with a record as of the making of this video 26 and 0 12 of those by knockout so billy joe he's originally from chesna and billy joe saunders grew up in a romantical traveling community near hatfield in hertfordshire and in fact his great grandfather absalom beanie was one of the community's most famous bare knuckle boxers saunders fought for chesna amateur boxing club which was overseen by Charlie Bliss and also at Hodgson Amateur Boxing Club. Now he turned to the amateurs pretty early. Obviously, he enjoyed fighting. It's kind of on a, in his DNA, as uh, you know, he's quite openly said on many occasions with a bare knuckle fighting, and of course, some of the history of his family in that as well. So he turned amateur, and his very first 49 fights, he wins all 49 of them on the bounce, and that included the 2007. Commonwealth Championships and the 2008 Strandia Cup where he just edged out Cuban Carlos Banto. Now remember that name Carlos Banto because that was quite important right before he turns pro. Now in 2008 BJ Saunders qualified for the Beijing Olympics in the welterweight division at only the age of 18 years old and at the European um, area qualifier in Italy he beat European champion Andre Balanov and Exan Vinia. Maybe I butchered that name. I don't know. But he lost to a semi-final to Stretsky. And he ended up beating a guy called Pavel Halavaka for the all-important third spot. So by finishing third, he qualified for the Beijing Olympics. And he becomes the very first person of British Romanical community to qualify for the Olympic Games. Now, he goes on to the Olympics in Beijing. And in the very first round, he beat Adam Klicki. But... He lost in the second round to Carlos Banto, that guy that I said to remember. And he was, of course, subsequently suspended for lewd behaviour, as they called it, for allegedly pertaining to an incident with a local woman during pre-season training camp in France. And in early December 2008, Billy Joe Saunders turned professional and signed with promoter Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions. So he turned pro with Frank Warren, and as of today, 26 fights later, and 10 years later, almost, he has stayed loyal to Frank Warren. And all this is quite important as the story goes on. So he turns pro and in 2009, on the 28th of February, he makes his pro debut at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham with a two round knockout victory of Attila Monlar. Who Monlar, he went into that fight with a record of 12 wins, 12 losses and six draws. Big Joe Saunders stops him inside two. And straight after then, he defeats Ronnie Gabble, who came into that fight with two wins and one draw. And this was at the Odyssey Arena in Belfast, and he stops him in two rounds. And also a two-round stoppage at the MEN Arena in Manchester over Matt Scriven. Matt Scriven, he went to the, into the fight at 13 wins and 52 defeats. So BJ Saunders stops him in two rounds. So his first three fights, all three of those second-round stoppages. So his fourth fight, Alex Spitko. He went to this fight with six wins and 15 losses. And this was at the York Hall in Bethnal Green. And he beat him over four rounds on points. And then on his fifth fight, he defeats Lee Noble with a record of 11 wins and 12 defeats. And this happened here in my home city of 
Newcastle at the Metro Radio Arena and he beat Lee Noble on points over six rounds. And then after then, he beats Andy Butlin. Although I should really say that his first five fights all happened in the 2009, so he made five fights in his first year. So he, he moves into 2010 and he defeats Andy Butlin and this was at Upton Park at West Ham. He beats him on points over six rounds and then he went to the Echo Arena in Liverpool and stops Tony Randall in the second round. Uh, Tony Randall, bit of a journeyman, 11 wins, 23 defeats, two draws. And then after then, he beat Tergay Uzgun. And again, this was back at the York Hall in Bethnal Green, where Uzgun, he quit in two rounds and he actually got uh, dropped in the second round as well. Then after then, he takes on Kevin Hammond with a record of eight wins, six defeats and one draw. And this was at the O2 Arena in London. And he stops Kevin Hammond in the second round. And then he defeats Norbert Skiskiris. I think I butchered that one. Anyway, this was at the Echo Arena in Liverpool. And Norbert, let's call him Norbert, he had a record of nine wins, seven defeats, and three draws. BJ Saunders stops him in the first round after dropping him twice. Then after them, he takes on Gary Bolden. And this was at Wembley Arena at Wembley. Not to be confused with Wembley Stadium, but um, Wembley Arena. And he, he defeats Bolden on points over 10 rounds. And this was for the British Boxing Board of Control Southern Area middleweight title. Then after then, he defeats Tommy Tolan. And again, this is back at the York Hall in Bethnal Green, where he stops him in one round. And Tolan, he went to the fight with four wins and seven defeats. Then after then, at this point, we're just going into 2012, he takes on Tony Hill. Eight wins, two defeats, and this is at the Royal Albert Hall in Kensington, and this is for the vacant Commonwealth middleweight title. And he stops Tony Hill in the first round. This was meant to be a 12 round fight, and he stops him in the 12 round, so he becomes the Commonwealth British middleweight champion. Um, then after then, he defends his title against Bradley Pierce, Price, sorry. Um, who had a record of 33 wins and 10 defeats. And this was at the York Hall again in Bethnal Green. And he defeats him by unanimous decision over 12 rounds. And then, of course, he defends his Commonwealth title again against Jared Fletcher. Jared Fletcher was an undefeated fighter, 12-0, again, back at York Hall in Bethnal Green. And he stops him in two rounds. Then a huge, huge step up against one Nick Blackwell. He's very popular here in the UK, Nick Blackwell. And again, this was for Billy Joe Saunders' Commonwealth middleweight title and for the vacant British Boxing Board of Control British middleweight title as well. And this was at the XL Arena in Dockland. And Nick Blackwell went into this fight with 12 wins and one defeat. And Billy Joe Saunders, he defeats him over 12 rounds by unanimous decision. Then he defends both of his... British middleweight titles and Commonwealth titles against Matthew Hall, who had a record of 25 wins and 6 defeats, again back at your call, and he defeats him on points. Then a massive, massive statement after then. On the 20th of July 2013, he fights for the vacant WBO international middleweight title against undefeated 16 and 0 Gary Spike O'Sullivan and again this is back at the Wembley Arena at Wembley and he defeats Gary Spike O'Sullivan in a very good fight over 12 rounds so he de um, he delivers uh, Spike his first defeat then after then again another very popular fighter so so far this will be his number three huge step up in one undefeated 15 and 0 John Ryder and this was at the Copper Box Arena in Hackney and he defeats John Ryder on points and defends his Commonwealth middleweight title and of course a British middleweight title as well as then after then he he takes on his fourth undefeated fighter in 22 and 0 and this is at the phones for you arena which is formerly the MEN arena in Manchester where he defeats Emmanuel Feliz Blandamura who was 22 and 0 at the time and he stops him in eight rounds so, again, this was for the vacant EBU European middleweight title as well as. So, Billy Joe Saunders is belt collecting, no doubt about it. And he doesn't just, just sit back and take a cherry pick. No, no, no. He goes after another 
undefeated fighter, very, very famous. You've all heard of him. One, Chris Eubank Jr. And this was on the 29th of November, 2014, in a, what most of us were calling a bit of a super fight back then as well. And this was for the Commonwealth middleweight title and the EBU European middleweight title as well as the British middleweight title as well as. And Billy Joe Saunders, he defeats Chris Eubank Jr. who had a record of 18 and 0. And this was at the XL Arena in Dockland. He defeats him by split decision over 12 rounds. Then after then, he takes a bit of a, an easy one, I suppose you could say, in Johan Bloyer. And who had a record of 17 wins, 27 losses and two draws. And again, this is back at the Wembley Arena and he stops him in four rounds. Then he gets his first world title shot on the 19th of December 2015 against WBO world middleweight champion Andy Lee. Andy Lee came into this fight with 34 wins, two defeats and one draw. And he drops Andy Lee on two occasions in the third round, but ultimately de defeats him by majority decision over 12 rounds to become the WBO world middleweight champion. So at this point, he has won everything that you could possibly win as a pro. Then he does take a bit of a hiatus. He gets injured. He has some issues. Some say he may have got a little bit lazy. He kind of fell out of love with boxing, all that kind of thing. He's trying to chase some of the big fights. Big fights not coming off. And of course, injuries are holding him back as well. And he makes his return or his first defense one year later after winning the WBO world title against Arthur Akovov. And this was at the Lagoon Leisure Center in Paisley. And he defeats him by unanimous decision over 12 rounds in a very, very close fight. Even BJ Saunders said that that was one of the worst performances that he's ever put on, but he just did enough to win a unanimous decision over Arthur Akovov. Um, at this time as well, um, he did lose his trainer in um, Tibbs, who uh, I'm, even right now I'm unsure of the reasons. I guess these guys have kind of like drifted apart. And Tyson Fury's current trainer in Ben Davison stood in the corner for Billy Joe Saunders against Akovov. But right after then, he gets himself a full-time trainer in one Adam Booth. He's going through camp and suddenly he kind of like realizes that I need to be further away from my friends, from my family to concentrate on my career and moves to Sheffield with one Dominic Ingle, who's of course training Kid Galahad and Lee Wood and Atif Shafiq, Kel Brook and others of course. And he fits in like a glove and takes on one Willie Monroe Jr. On the 16th of September, 2017, Willie Monroe Jr. He has a record of 21 wins and two defeats at the time. And this was at the Copper Box Arena at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in Hackney Wick. And he defeats William Monroe Jr. by unanimous decision over 12 rounds. So he makes his second defense of his WBO world title. Then after then, as champion, he could have pretty much chose whoever he wanted, but he went after his original mandatory in David Lemieux. David Lemieux was his original mandatory. Then David Lemieux refused to fight him for whatever reason. He's saying that he wasn't ready, which is why the Willie Monroe Jr. fight happened. And of course, just before then as well, it was supposed to have been one Advil Kurt Cizé, who was an absolute beast who beat Tommy Langford previously to that one. But he takes on David Lemieux. And not only that, he goes to Canada, David Lemieux's hometown in Laval, in the place Bell in Canada and defends his WBO world middleweight title. And he schools David Lemieux, schools him, wins every second of every single round over 12 and defeats him by a unanimous decision in an absolute masterclass performance. And this performance pretty much propelled Billy Joe Saunders' name to what he is now, very, very popular fighter. Now, up next will be Demetrius Andrade. This will be on the 20th of October. Again, he's going to be traveling to Boston, the United States of America, to defend his WBO world title. And between himself and promoter Frank Warren, they thought it best financially as well to not only travel to America, but to fight on DAZN, Eddie Hearn's new American platform, and of course, Sky Sports here in the UK. Um, now, he was trying to fight Martin Murray before this fight, but Billy Joe Saunders got injured on two occasions, which is why Martin Murray fight didn't happen. But here he is at this point, 
where he will be defending against an undefeated 25-0 Demetrius Andrade, former 154-pound world champion. So we have to wait and see what happens with that one. So you drop your thoughts about Billy Joe Saunders and his career. For me, he has a very, very stellar resume. And a defeat over Demetrius Andrade it would be phenomenal for him. And maybe go on and fight the winner of Canelo and Golovkin for a unified world title. Or maybe move on to potentially the winner of Daniel Jacobs and Devrichenko for the IBF. So we'll have to wait and see. He's, this is BJ Saunders' story so far. It's far from over. But let's see where the story goes. You drop your thoughts below. Click that thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.